Hi and welcome everyone. I'm uh, Sandro Paganotti, a uh, Google, Google, Google Developer Expert in Chrome. And uh, today I want to introduce you the service worker and show you some nice uh, uh, use cases uh, you can uh, uh, do and implement using this very interesting technology. So, as you might have already heard, uh, the service worker is a brand new technology part of the uh, W3C standard that actually is implemented in Chrome and will be implemented in Firefox very soon. Uh, to explain how a service worker works, let's see it. Uh, let's have a look at this very easy HTTP request one. When you perform a request, the request goes from the browser to your server and then the server generates the response and returns back to the browser. Until now, we as a front-end developer had no uh, way to control an HTTP request after it left the browser. With the service worker, this changes. The service worker is a, a JavaScript file that sits in the browser and uh, allow us to intercept and decorate or change or do whatever we want with every HTTP request that that leave our page to the server. Uh, the most common use case for a service worker is uh, using some kind of cache mechanism in order to avoid HTTP requests to go to the server if there is no connection or in other cases. But uh, other mechanisms can be implemented because I will see in a moment a service worker is just a JavaScript file and nothing more. So this is, for example, a service worker can just forward all the requests to the server as normally happens. So in this case, uh, the, the page goes to the server through the service worker and then back to the, to the client. But uh, for example, the service worker can also choose to retrieve the page from a cache file, from a cache uh, database which sits in the browser too, and is also part of the specification. The service worker can also choose to forge a, a response on the fly, such as this example. In fact, the four lines of code you see in the bottom of the page are a valid service worker. And that says, every time I receive a fetch event, I respond with a new response with it containing text, sorry, no cats available. So, as you see, service worker is very flexible technology that basically allows us to do whatever we want with, the, um, with our requests and to deal with them. So, uh, to continue, I want to introduce a nice use case for this technology. And um, I don't know if uh, someone had the same problem I have a few uh, months ago while working on a framework. Uh, front-end framework that didn't support XML as a form of response. Uh, so um, we, I mean, one of the solution uh, that usually uh, comes to mind when uh, dealing with such a problem is to create some sort of a middleware uh, on the server to transform XML back to JavaScript. But sometimes it's not possible because sometimes you don't have uh, the control of the server that generate the XML. So, uh, a nice idea to uh, uh, solve this problem is to use Service Worker because a Service Worker can transparently transform XML to JSON before it reaches the page. So, for example, in this case, I can check if the content type of the response is XML and if affirmative, I can transform it to JSON before returning to the page. Let's see how can we can implement this. First of all, we need an XML parser. An XML parser is easy to find as a form of JavaScript library, but uh, uh, all of the XML parser created for the web uh, leverage on the DOM parser, which is an object available within the window object. And uh, unfortunately, in the service worker, we don't have access to the window object. So we need to find an alternative way. Luckily, Node.js has a plenty of very valid XML parser, so we can use one of them. For example, in, for, this, uh, for this small library, I used XML doc, and so I just used npm, which is the package manager for Node.js, to download XML doc. Then I create a very small file 
in my lib folder that says self which is the object that basically is um, uh, the, the, the root object within the service worker self.xml doc equal require xml doc I know that require is not a valid JavaScript syntax for the browser but there's this very nice tool called browserify and by just simply writing on a common line browserify libxml doc output libxml doc dot build dot js browserify take care of discovering all the inheritance of the file and translate them in a single file that can be understood by the browser so now in libxmldoc.build.js we have our XML parsing library ready to use. Let's see how the service worker is implemented. As I said, the service worker is a standard JavaScript file. With import script, we can specify other JavaScript files to be imported in our service worker. In this case, it's a DOM parsing library. Then we listen for the fetch event and every time the browser uh, within our application made a request we get this fetch event for uh, every uh, event we receive we can also access the request itself within the event.request property uh, using the respond with which is very new we can say to the event that the respond is containing into the promise we passed as argument to respond with. So once the promise we pass to response with is resolved, we can then the, the, the service worker know that the process is finished and can return the response. Next we can see the fetch. Fetch is the same as XML HTTP request except it's better. It's a new version. So we can call fetch and then the URL and then we can specify the method of the request and then it's very important in this case to use the mode. Mode course says that we can also uh, perform fetch request to domain that are not the same domain as the region of the service worker. Uh, then uh, the fetch return a promise and so we use then to say when the promise is resolved we got our response and uh, within our response we need to check if the header uh, of the, the response match content type application.xml if true we need to request the body of the response which is another asynchronous call service worker has a lot of asynchronous call then if we got the body we can use our function which is convert to json to transform the body into json we know the body was XML, so we can transform into JSON. And then we forge a new response on the fly uh, with the transform the document, uh, changing the header back to content type application JSON. The convert to JSON function itself, it's, uh, I mean, not really important for this uh, uh, screencast, but the other thing I want to point out is that in this function we use the library we uh, packed. Uh, two steps before, two steps back. So you can see at the line number two, we say var document equal to new self.xml doc, that is the npm library we downloaded a few minutes ago, dot xml document and content, and then we uh, can access to all the method and of that specific library, and this is very useful. Then we do just a few. Uh, uh, small operation to transform the results into something more suitable to a JSON encoding but this is not a main part of the screencast. Anyway, at the end of the function we have a very nice JSON that resembles the same structure as the XML that we received from the server. As a final step we want to try this in a browser so we can write this very very few lines of code and saying that uh, um, once the, the application is loaded we can find uh, a pre-tag on the page and uh, perform a request mm, yeah, classic XML HTTP request in this case uh, the, uh, the server is the server of uh, the popular uh, game EVE Online which has XML APIs and uh, when, the, when we get the response we can print the response uh, on the page as is because we need just to see if the response is XML 
or has been converted to JSON as expected. The last three lines of code are very important because they install the service worker. So if service worker is navigator, which is a really uh, simple way to check if our browser supports service worker, navigator.serviceworker.register, then we point to the service worker file and then the scope. Okay, uh, we can have a very, very small, uh, quick demo about this. So uh, this is the uh, URL. So I can first load uh, our uh, index.html file and as we see the response at the moment is XML because the service worker has not yet been installed. But if we switch to Chrome service worker internal, which is the page that allow us to see uh, how many service worker have been installed into this browser, we can see that at the moment we have a service worker installed and running. So now if we update the page, the service worker kicks in and we got the same result back but in JSON which is the, I mean, the point of our library. So, thank you for following this very quick screencast. Uh, you can find the GitHub repository in the slides, uh, in this uh, slide. And uh, I hope you enjoyed it and uh, stay tuned for the next. Bye!